It's first pitch with the Prez. Baseball right in front of us. We've got preseason going right now. Two of the best baseball handicappers on the planet joining us today. We're going to be discussing how to bet preseason MLB. Dave Koken, a complete and total legend in this game. Uh, and Brian Leonard, I mean, dude, you are right there, man, uh, on legend status. Uh, it's so good to see you again. I, I haven't seen you in ages since baseball ended last year. Uh, you're on a beautiful run in college basketball, uh, I think. So congratulations on that. Uh, and welcome back, man. I'm excited to have you. Yeah, I looked at uh, my schedule in 8.30 that I was on your show. Good to be back. Good for baseball to be back. And uh, Dave and I, uh, Fantasy Ball League, and uh, I admire Dave's uh, work in baseball very much. I love to do the show just to pick Dave's brain. Well, you know, it's funny you say that, Brian, because uh, I called Dave a couple of nights ago, and I'm like, Dave, let's do a preseason baseball show. Uh, and he's like, okay, can we have Brian Leonard on? Uh, this is a true story, I swear to God. And I'm like, sure, Brian and you. He's like, yeah, I need to pick Brian's brain. I swear to God. Dave? Well, ulterior motive. I was trying to scoop up some information as to what he might be doing as far as the, fan, the auction league drafts that we uh, are in together. Yeah. Uh, so, now that I... so the two of you guys, uh, that's pretty funny stuff. But uh, so your baseball fantasy, uh, is it a keeper league? It's, these are dynasty leagues. Uh, these, these, are, th these are the real deal. They're auction leagues. Minor leaguers can get drafted. Uh, it's fairly complex. You got, uh, this is for seam heads. If you're not a seam head, you got no shot. Uh, so how much, how much can I ask? You want to? Yeah, it's not, it's not a huge money dollars. Uh, in in each league and uh, um, and some uh, you know incidental expenses, so it's not big money, but the competition's pretty fierce. Yeah, we we and National League, so you got to know the teams a little bit deeper. Uh, what I always find interesting, and I tell Dave, we've got maybe five guys in the league that are handicappers, sports handicappers, and between the five of us, I there's one guy I think that has won the championship while we've been in it other than the five of us so it just shows when you're gambling for a living you know have to know all the players you have to know the teams and i hate to say it because i like these guys but there's a lot of dead money in this league oh yeah well that's okay it, with brian me. yeah let's it, be it honest here yeah. you you literally tell me is dave dead money Koken going to be on the show today i yes I you say that dave, no, I, dave uh, cash basically guys we're year. having a little bit yeah. of sound issues uh there's a lag i'm sorry bry we're going to talk offline i want to get your internet faster so uh because dave and i have been doing a hockey show all year i know it's not on my side or dave's uh but i will pay so we need to get you hooked up with a better faster internet provider or go get uh what's called a net from Best Buy, just send me the bill, baby. You just send me what I need, and I'll head over there. Okay, boys, let's get to it. Everybody remember, it's first pitch. We're going to start in a couple of weeks. There will be a baseball preview show where we'll take a look at the over and unders, win-loss for the teams. Uh, and uh, today's show, we're just going to talk about how to bet preseason. Uh, before we get into that, I want to give out a promo code. Uh, every time you watch one of my shows, there's always a promo code. $350 off of anyone's entire baseball season, and I mean anyone. Uh, the promo code is MLB Early Bird. It's at the bottom of the screen. That's MLB Early Bird. You can use it over at wagertalk.com. And if you want help, I would isolate down to three guys. Brian Leonard, 60-plus uh, percent return on investment last year in baseball, over 100 percent return on investment the year prior. Uh, Dave Koken, every year just constantly winning in baseball. And Tony Finn, 
Uh, he was our number one baseball expert last year uh, and is our number one baseball expert lifetime over at wagertalk.com. Those are the three guys I would hone in on. All three are different. Um, Tony, you're going to get somewhere around three plays a day. Uh, Brian, w- what about you? Yeah, it goes anywhere from passing to maybe three or four, but mostly probably two. And Brian, uh, recollection, uh, you are a dog better, a short dog better, if I recall. Yeah, I'm a dog better. Unfortunately, last baseball season, um, I had to become a favorite better because as the season went on, it was clear that the teams that weren't trying to win, I couldn't back. So the only way to get any plays up there was to play favorites, and it worked out well. Uh, I didn't have quite the success as I did the previous year, as you mentioned, but still made a nice profit for my clients. And I, it, the best time to play underdogs is the beginning of the year. Yeah. And you go from there, depending on what happens or what kind of uh, lines we get. But I'm, I'm not a big favorite player because uh, it just takes too much to get back if you lose. But uh, if you like underdogs, uh, that's what I concentrate on. Dave Koken, uh, how would you, how would you, uh, consider yourself? Well, I mean, it, it's an evolving situation because, uh, for years I, I played nothing but, but straight nine inning games, but with bullpens becoming as volatile as they've yeah. been the last two years, I'm transforming more to a first five better because to me, starting pitching is still the big key as far as pitching is goes, but uh, as far as handicapping go, baseball goes, but listen, if you've got, if you've got bullpens out there for three or four innings, every game, and that's what you've got now, because you know, a hundred pitches and these guys are done. Uh, you're basically in a crap shoot for the last four innings. And I had more success last year as I transformed more into a first five handicapper. I'm not going to, rule out playing full games, obviously, if I think I've got a big bullpen edge. But it's going to be more first fives this year, and they're available for everybody, so that's no big deal. He's Dave Koch and Brian Leonard with us. You're watching First Pitch. Let's go. So, guys, I don't bet much baseball preseason. And, you know, we had a guy comment uh, on Puck Time uh, yesterday on our YouTube channel, Wager Talk TV, and he said, you're doing a show on how to bet MLB preseason. The answer is don't. Well, um, he's wrong. Yeah. So, Dave, let's start with yeah, you. Okay, Why so look, do we I'm, bet preseason? Right. I'll use the NFL as an example. I am actually better in the NFL preseason than I am in the regular season. I love the NFL preseason because you can get information as to who's going to be playing, how long they're going to be playing, oftentimes the game plans as to whether a coach is kind of trying to win the game or not. I mean, if you've done nothing but bet John Harbaugh on the preseason since he took over as the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, don't tell me that it's not a good bet. I mean, he's got like 14 in a row or something like that. In baseball, essentially it's the same thing. You can go to, uh, if you just do a search, uh, you can find a variety of sites, including the MLB site. Just search uh, MLB spring training lineups. And it'll take you to pages where they have today's lineups up. There are also uh, some sites that will give you the pitching, at least five or six deep for most teams. So you have an idea of whether some teams are going to be starting big leaguers uh, or are going with shock troops for the most part. Oftentimes, particularly with the Florida games, more so in Florida than in Arizona, because in Arizona, all the teams, there's a massive difference, to use one of your favorite words, between the Cactus League and the Grapefruit League. The Cactus League, which is Arizona, all the, all the teams are within, it's part of the reason I love going down there in spring training. You basically, you can see two games a day um, because they're all within, I don't know, like or half an hour, yeah, half an hour, 40 minutes, and that's about it. So, and all the teams are there. In Florida, it's not, not at all the same. You've got actual bus trips for a, a couple hours there. So, so oftentimes you'll find road games where or, or games where the road team is traveling with basically a bunch of minor leaguers and in many cases lower minor leaguers. And those are spots where you can go ahead and, and play the home team and feel comfortable about your chances. There are definite advantages out there in preseason, and I don't care what it is that you're betting on. If you've got an edge,
Brian Leonard, I why agree. do you bet preseason baseball? Uh, you know, I didn't for a long time, and I agreed with that uh, person that said it. You know that it that I thought I could win, and until I started going to these preseason games, and I realized what was going on. Situation where uh, the players are out there to get their work. Um, a lot of line up and see a lot of veteran players again. Have a lot of veteran players, and they think, okay, well, the veteran players are the team that's the better team. Veteran players are not there to put up stats; they're there to get their work in. Uh, they get out there. You know, if you're a pitcher, sometimes a pitcher will come out and say, he says, you know what? Today I'm working on my fastball, and he goes out and throws 40 fastballs, doesn't care the results. He just wants to work on his fastball and his location. You don't get that in the regular season. Nothing like that happens in the regular season. Um, so there's so many things that you could take advantage of. The veteran players are out there for the most part, especially early in the, in the uh, preseason games. They're out there to just get in shape. They're trying to get their routine down. Or you got guys that are, you know, guys that are probably going back to double are out there to impress. So you're getting the best of these players who probably won't even touch the major leagues this year, yeah. but they want to get their name in the back of the head, back of the mind of the managers in case there is an injury. Because there's many times, I'm a Cleveland Indians fan, and there's many times I'll hear the manager talk. He says, you know, I went back and I looked at what this guy did in preseason. I remembered him. I liked the way this guy played. He was a hard-nosed ball player. I like him in the, or I like him in, in the dugout. I want him on the team. So it's something where, you know, you get a lot of name recognition. And, you know, people are always talking about the betting against the public. This is the time to bet against the public because the, the public is betting on all the big name players. They, they're going to be in the lineup. They're in the lineup for two innings. Come on now. Uh, guys are just out there for a couple innings. You get a big advantage. And like Dave said, they tell you who's going to come into the game. So you have a, Nice advantage, like you do in the NFL. In the NFL, you got to do a lot, a lot of reading. And as Dave said, here in the preseason or preseason baseball, there's guys on Twitter you could follow. There's websites that tell you who is going to play, and they're going to say this guy's probably coming in after 40 pitchers. This guy's going to pitch 20 inning or 20 pitches. This guy will be in to close. Um, the relief, your top relievers, if they come into these games. They're not coming in in the ninth inning. They come in, schedule a lot of times, they'll come in in the first inning just because they want to get, you know, you could be down, like it was a game yesterday, down 13 to nothing, and they could have used the closer because he could come in early in the game and pitch his one inning. So it is a lot different uh, things to look for in preseason, and the information's out there. Yeah, a good example actually took place on Thursday, um, and this information was, was there for anybody who wanted it. The Cardinals... We're going with uh, Flaherty and then Dakota Hudson. Now, normally you would say, well, this early in preseason, they're probably only going to go an inning or two. But they made it clear they were each going to go 50 pitches. Well, that's probably five or six innings right there. And that's, uh, that's, that's a rare situation where it's like in the, it was reflected in the total. I think the total was like seven in the game, which you never see in an exhibition game. So the market knew it. But it was still a great situation. These guys are facing somewhat uh, you know, minor league rosters. Well, it figures that that guys like we, are, like uh, uh, Flaherty and and Hudson, are going to have success, and you know, it ended up a three-one game and easy under. Now, the the one negative is that the information's become so easy to get that you're seeing dramatic line yeah. movements. I mean, it's every day, and if you're not there early, you're going to miss the prices. I'm looking at we're doing this on a Friday. I'm looking at the moves today. Uh, Minnesota line moved 20 cents. Uh, the Nationals line didn't move much. The uh, uh, Miami line, the, the favorite, switched. Uh, the uh, Pirates line went up 20 cents. Uh, There's been a 30 cent move in the Blue Jays Tigers game. So it's one after another after another where the public is, the betters are, are getting this information. The limits are low in preseason. They're not taking any five dime bets in preseason. And uh, so it doesn't take much to move the line. So you've got to get out there early if you're going to do this stuff. Um, my plays are generally going to be out, you know, hopefully by 9 o'clock at the absolute latest, 9 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, after that, 
I'll have missed the price, and I'm not going to go out there and lay a bad number. Right. And, and, and knowing I'm laying a bad number going in, that that's a bad idea. Right. Yeah, I, I, do, I do something a little bit different than Dave. Um, I put out my plays an hour or two before the first games go off. Um, I don't use the overnights because, as Dave just no. pointed out, you're getting 20, 30 cent moves. Yep. And I don't want to put out, a, you know, I could bet them, but I don't want to put them out of play for my clients. Um, if unless they can get those numbers. So I wait until a couple hours before and sure I lose a little bit of line value, but I don't want to be laying some, you know, laying a plus getting a plus one fifty and my clients only getting plus one thirty. Right. Yeah. So I'm trying to look out for my clients here. And as Dave said, it's it's not a situation where we get a lot of money down here anyway. So I think it's better for me and, and I'm sure Dave feels the same way. You try to you try to take the, the client's position here before you're on. Yeah, and just to clarify, I, I met nine o'clock in the morning. Yes. So we're in the same time frame. I mean, I, I'm not going to make the play until I see what who's playing and, and who's pitching. And you got you just you have to get up early. Set the alarm clock early if you want to play these day games, especially in Florida, because they're all getting started by uh, uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yep. Uh, whereas at least you got a few hours on the uh, on the Arizona games. Guys, uh, Brian, I want to go back to something you said uh, earlier on in the show. Um, you know, Clayton Kershaw goes out and pitches starting for the, you know, and he's starting against Joe Schmo that nobody's heard of in his, you know, 19-year-old uh, that, you know, is just wants to make a name for himself. And, you know, my guess is the public will be all, oh, Clayton Kershaw, you know, let's back him, Matt Madison Baumgartner or whatever. Um, nobody has seen this 19-year-old pitch, and uh, this kid is going to come out and try – his damnedest, as you mentioned, where listening to the interviews, which I think is very important when betting uh, preseason in any sport is listening to what these guys are saying. I mean, Clayton goes out and gets rocked and they're like, hey, Clayton, you got rocked. What's up? He's like, hey, man, like, come on. I took the summer off. Like, I'm trying to get work on my mechanics. Uh, Joe Schmo ain't working on his mechanics, dude. Joe Schmo is pitching the World Series game seven. Uh, is that something you're looking at regularly? Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking at, especially if it's a guy who isn't one of the top prospects because the other team really, they're not going to, you know, that during the regular season, the, the batting coach is sitting there. He goes, okay, this is what the pitcher likes to do. He's going to be showing videos. These guys are just out there, like I said, just trying to get in shape at this point. So if it's somebody that they faced earlier, they, they know about that pitcher a little bit. If it's a guy who's one of the top prospects of this team, chances are they know about him. They're going to ask some of their other guys that have faced him in the past what they see. But it's it's a guy coming out there that's basically going to be going back to Double A. Um, you know, it's just a, a friendly invite to get him accustomed to spring training. Those are the kind of guys you want to back. But the problem is you're only getting probably two innings out of them. Right. So then you got seven more innings. You got to worry about some other pitchers coming up. So. Um, I just think there's a little bit of value going there. And, and, and Dave, Dave touched on it talking about the Dodgers. The, everybody knows the Dodgers and the Yankees are the best teams this year, although if we wait till the end I of spring training. I don't know. I'm all about the Blue Jays. The Yankees may, may be back to having no starting pitchers by the time we get to the regular season start. Right. But the public knows that those are the teams expected to win the most games. And, of course, those are the teams that get the most money in preseason also because they expect – the, the better players, the better teams to win. But, you know, when I handicap baseball, you've got a 40-man roster. There's probably 60 guys on a team that's going to be playing. You're 50, 60 guys in the course of the season. You've normally got your five-man rotation. An average team has 10 starters in the regular season. So you've got to go deep on these teams. So I follow, as Dave does, because we're in fantasy baseball. Uh, we, follow, we know the guys in AAA. Yeah. We know the best guys in AA. So not a lot of people know that. So there's certain teams that aren't very deep at all. And those are the teams that you can go against in the preseason to make some money. Dave, one of the things uh, Brian mentioned is you're going to get some of these guys out for two innings, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you spoke at the top of the show about how you're going to be betting uh, half games a lot this year. Um, do you do the same in preseason, especially with the fact that we really don't know what's going to be rolled out later in the game? No, no, uh, I don't think it, in spring training. Uh, first of all, a lot of people don't have first five lines available in spring training. Um, and uh, no, because 
I'm looking at more at the whole game. I want to, if I have an, an idea who's playing in the last four innings, that's part of the handicapping process. Uh, Brian, are there teams perennially like what Dave was saying with uh, Haba, as he in his Boston accent calls him? Uh, are there teams perennially that just want that just go out there, you're in, you're out, and win in spring training, and teams that you know don't? I, I'll touch on that in a second. I just wanted to add something to it, your question for Dave regarding the five innings. Um, in the regular season, you've got certain guys that will come in the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, so you know who's going to pitch, and those guys could pitch back-to-back games. They could pitch three out of four. In the preseason, the coaching staff knows they've got a lot of guys in there, so they'll let a guy pitch one inning or pitch whatever he wants during that one game. And then it may be two or three more games before he pitches again. So you don't have to worry about your best players being worn out because this isn't, let's be honest, most teams come into the preseason games not trying to win. They come into the preseason games just to get their work in. Uh, Getting to your point, yes, um, but it's different every year. When you find teams that are coming off of a season, uh, the Colorado Rockies for me, they're a team that really fell off last year. They did not have a good season. They didn't make any moves in the offseason to help this team out. There's a reason why I could see uh, Colorado trying to win in the preseason because the general fans going to look at that and they say, hey, you know, they went uh, 30 and 15 in the preseason. Maybe they're not going to be as bad as what we think. So those are the teams I like to bet on. Um, teams that didn't win in the regular season last year, especially if you got teams that have gone, you know, back to back losing seasons, uh, teams uh, that um, have don't have a shot at the World Series. They want to build up fan interest coming into the season. It means more to them to win these games. And, and, and also, obviously, and I think we see this in the NFL, uh, you know, the managers and especially new ones taking over teams. And Dave, I'll go to you on this. You know, you're, you're a new manager. You're taking over a team that perennially doesn't win. Call it, you know, the Padres or uh, you want to set a new culture, no, a winning culture. No, you don't take no, that. No, you don't, no. No, it means nothing. Okay. In fact, in fact, the, the new managers, uh, no, they're just trying to set a routine. Look, I, I, you, you, I, I want to make it clear. You're not. This is not real scientific. This isn't like the regular season. And you're, uh, what you're trying to do is, is maybe go too complex here in terms of what they want to do. It's just about the lineups, getting an advantage, uh, having the, the better guys out there. Uh, that, that's my impression. That's the way it's always been. It's this isn't this isn't real complicated. Uh, I mean, and again, I'll use the NFL as an example. One of the myths out there is that well, new coaches want to win right away. Actually, they don't care. Uh, new new coaches are they have more of a honeymoon period, and they're just trying to to get their routine in place. And that's the way, kind of the way it is with Major League Baseball. Brian, you I, agree? I, I'll, I'll I'll add something to that. Um, I agree in part to what Dave says, probably mostly to what Dave says, but. It depends on if the manager was in the system beforehand. If you've got a guy that was the pitching coach last year, all of a sudden he gets promoted, he knows those players already. So it's a different situation than if you bring in somebody from another another team that doesn't know the players as well. I think that has a little bit of a differential. He, he wants to learn, learn the players a little bit. Or if the other guy was a bench coach the prior year, he already knows what the players can do. I think that may have something to do with it. But overall, Dave, Dave's correct. Guys, uh, I'll go to you first. And one thing, one go ahead, Dave. I want to throw one more thing in. I don't play the same unit value in preseason as I do in, in uh, the regular season. I'm, I'm basically only playing half unit plays. So at Wager Talk, maybe 2% yep. or 3% tops. You're not going to get any big plays from me in preseason. Well, that actually leads perfectly to my next question. Um, Dave, do you do better, worse, or the same in preseason versus regular season? I don't know. I never really measured one against the other at Bry? I just started preseason last year. Uh, I didn't have enough information on it in prior years. Last year I had success doing it this year. So far, knock on wood, I've had success doing it, but like Dave, my, my plays are three stars in the preseason. Uh, there's too much variability here to, to make a four or 5% play, but Dave touched on this early when we had our, just starting out, uh, he was talking about the differences in playing in, in, uh, Arizona as opposed to Florida. To me, 
the home team gets way too much of an advantage in these games. To me, the only advantage a home team gets in preseason is they get to bat last in the ninth inning. Um, when you're traveling, and we talked about 40 minutes between every ballpark in Arizona, you just get on the bus, or in fact, a lot of times they, they drive their own car, depending yeah. on where they live in, in preseason, and they get out to the ballpark. Well, I've been to many ballparks, and you know, you, unless it's like the Cubs or the Yankees or something where they've just got a tremendous amount of fans, you go to Cleveland Indians, and, which is my team. Um, there's going if the Cubs are playing in Cleveland, there's going to be seventy percent Chicago Cubs fans there it, at least. Um, that's just the way it is. So the fans travel all you know all the way around, no matter where it is. So the road, if you're looking from it from a fan standpoint, a cheering standpoint, the road teams have just as much chance as the home teams do in those games. The only difference is the home team gets to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. And as we've seen in most of these games, they don't go extra innings. So you see ties in uh, the preseason, which you right. don't see in the regular season. So um, I, I try to look at uh, underdogs that play on the road in preseason, and that's my secret. Yeah, by, by the way, from a, from a fan standpoint, the other cool thing about having the lineup, the ability to get lineups early now is if you're in Arizona, if you go down to spring, and it's really great. Spring training in Arizona is fantastic. A lot of good restaurants in Scottsdale. Uh, it, the weather's perfect. It's just a great time. The cool thing now is uh, if I'm down there, I'll, I'm going to pr- hopefully get down for a few days uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, check the lineups in the morning. Oh, Mike Trout's playing for the Angels. Well, let's go see them. And if Mike Trout's not playing in that game, it's like, well, I'll go see somebody else. So he, you can actually map out the games you want to see based on, on, on whether the best players are going, are, are going to be in the game or not. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. I did a video earlier uh, Wednesday uh, about this. And I talked about when I, when I go down, I usually go with Marco. Marco Marco's a good friend of mine, uh, Marco D'Angelo over at Wager Talk. And I get up and I see who the starting pitcher is for the game. That's how I make my, discuss, my decisions on if I'm going to it. Marco's is whatever food yeah. he wants to eat that day. You know, like yep. San Francisco's, San Francisco, Scottsdale, if you go to home game, go to Scottsdale. The Giants in, in Scottsdale do it right. They've got a lot of young people in the stands. And in, hey, Dave and I are older guys who like to look at some beautiful women. Uh, but also, they've got so many food choices. The foods are great every there. there. Um, Marco's got his certain foods he likes in every stadium. So if I say, I don't care, he says, you know, I'm, I'm in the mood for a bratwurst yeah, that, today, so I'm yes. going to go to this park. I, lo- I, love, I love this food here, so let's go to that park. And it's a fun atmosphere, and hey, I'm a fat guy. I like to eat, too, so it works out well yeah, for Yeah, so what, here's what you don't hear Marco saying. Man, the Greek salad in uh, Arizona really good. Let's go there. Uh, the kale smoothie over at uh, that ballpark really satisfies me. A uh, quick question, uh, quick story. I'm watching uh, the Vegas Golden Knights a couple of nights ago. They're playing Edmonton. Uh, Marco is at the game. I'm on the over in that game. It loses. Uh, Marco was cheering for me at the beginning, and then like midway through the second, he's like, sorry, I need Flurry to get a shot out. If they do, I get a box of Krispy Kreme donuts. I literally text Marco. I'm like, do you really need a box of Krispy Kreme donuts? And, uh, yeah, he does. I'm, I'm, I actually have on my phone, uh, for all to see, there is a picture of Marco sending me his box of Krispy Kreme donuts. Uh, that's a funny story, bro. I thanks. Uh, guys, yeah. go, ahead, go ahead, guys, and I'll go to you Dave first and then you Bri, uh, anything you want to end the show with? No, not especially. Uh, uh, I think we covered most everything. Yeah, I'll uh, make a suggestion. If you can afford the time, uh, uh, even though the games don't count, spring training is an absolute blast. Uh, make a trip. Get some friends and go, whether it's Florida. Yeah. I think Arizona's better because of the proximity of all the ballparks. But you'll have a great time. You actually will have a great time. It's relaxing. It's fun. And uh, you can bet a little while you're there, too. Uh, Brian, anything you want to end with? Yeah, I agree with Dave there. I, I, I've been to Florida. I went with Florida. Went to Florida with uh, Ralph Michaels 20 years ago. And we just took, uh, you know, two weeks. Just drove around to each stadium, got to see some of these cities. Uh, now, to get see more games, I go to Arizona. 
but it is a lot of fun. And the one mistake people make is they wait until the last two weeks because they want to see the big name players. <laughs> the problem is everybody does that. And all the games are sold out. You've got to go through scalpers. It costs more money. Yeah. Harder to get into the restaurants. Um, Dave and I both like the young kids. We want to be able to see the young kids. I'm a okay. big we, uh, Lindor we, fan. That I sounds so bad, Brian. Dave and I really no. like the young kids. We're going to the ballpark to check out the young kids. Okay. Marco's. I think we all know what we're talking about, especially after my comment earlier about the beautiful women. But. If you go the early part of spring training, you get a lot better seats. Uh, you don't have to, you know, don't have to get in a line, yeah. for long lines for uh, concessions. The restaurants you can get into. The, the pros go early on a spring training. The fans go the last yeah. part of spring training. So, yeah. if you want to enjoy yourself, go the first part, and uh, and that you'll probably see. Uh, Marco and I or some other guys out there next Yeah, year. and if you're looking for Marco, find the most unhealthy food humanly possible. He'll be standing in line. Uh, boys, thanks for a great show. I'm really excited about doing first pitch again this year. Dave Koken, you'll be on five days a week, and we'll have a uh, co-guest uh, with you regularly. Brian, you'll be on uh, probably every Friday, and, well, frankly, yes. any other day you want to be on, just email and say, I want to be on. You're priority one, brother. Um, I appreciate it. Guys, check out uh, all our handicappers over at Wager Talk. Uh, we have a promotion up $350 off of the regular season and playoff price. MLB Early Bird is the promo code. Uh, buy Dave, buy Brian, buy Tony, one of those three guys. You're going to make money. Uh, and it's going to be a fun year. Uh, go Blue Jays. That's it for me, boys. We will see you in a couple of weeks for the MLB first pitch preview show. And I think I'm going to change the color of my background. The green I chose is a little uh, off-putting for me. So bear with us on that as well. Later, guys, and thanks for doing the show. Appreciate it.